What's up, sports fans? Welcome back to the channel. A warm welcome from sunny Chicago. I'm your host, Sadi, and today we're making a simple Vertigo background. You can use this for thumbnails, intros, even transitions. It's psychedelic, it's exciting, it's a must-have in your goodie bag as a designer. So let's get cracking. First, I'm going to create a new project, 1920-1080, at 30 frames a second. And then I'm going to take a Fusion Composition, and I will make it five seconds long. Put the playhead on top, Shift 5 to go into the Fusion tab. Let's start by creating a background node and connect it to the media out. By default, it's going to be black. And notice that I'm going to go in here, turn off auto resolution, and set my canvas size to 4000 by 4000. Now you're wondering, 4000 by 4000, what does that mean? Well, you'll see in a little bit. We're going to use a couple of duplication techniques that will cut off if the canvas size isn't big enough. So this is going to come in handy. Okay, now that we have our first node, I'm going to change to gradient and uh, let's go with a radial type of gradient. And I'm going to choose some color. And let me show you how I work with color. So there's a bunch of websites online that you can use as reference for palettes. I'll leave a link for this one in the description. And for this particular composition, I'm going to be using this palette. Okay. So usually I'll have something like this open on the second monitor and I'll copy and paste colors or I'll, I'll create a swatch uh, just with that if I need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our two colors. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to put this, the center of the radius, in the middle of the composition. And as you can see here, uh, where it says start, that's where the center is. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5 puts it in the middle. And then I'll put the, the other end all the way at the corner here. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial. You can use it to learn the effect that I'm creating. Or you can just download the file and use it as a preset. But what you may not realize is that I'm going to show you a couple of new nodes in this one. A gentle introduction. And while you're distracted, I'm going to show you a couple of motion graphics compositing techniques that are really subtle and easy to miss, but add a ton of professional finesse to your work. Okay, so now that we have our yellow, I'm going to create another background. Type this in. I'm going to change the size again. And go back to color. Copy and paste my code here, this kind of color. Next, I'm going to make a bar. So I'm going to add a rectangle mask, like that. Height can be 100. And the width will depend on how many bars I want in this composition. So let's go with 1 and divide that by uh, 40. OK, why 40? Because there will be 20 bars of blue and 20 bars of yellow. And then I'm going to position this all the way at the edge here. I'm holding down Control to make small changes, and that's good enough. Control F to fit to view. So now I have this little bar. All I have to do is just duplicate it. To add the duplicate node, I'm going to add Tool, Effect, Duplicate. I'm going to pipe this in here. The duplicate node is a staple in any motion graphics artist's bag of tricks. You're going to be using this a lot. So in the duplicate, I'm going to add 20 copies. I'm going to hold down Control and just bring this over like that. Now, I noticed this, that if I put in a value here, say 0 0.55, it doesn't really work. Not sure why. So I'm just going to move this and create the bars. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as close as you can. That looks pretty good. OK, so now you have your 20 bars of teal or blue and then 20 bars of yellow. All we need to do is somehow make them 
circular. To do that, we're going to add a node called coordinate space. And what this will do, it's a warp uh, tool. So if you go into warp down here, you can see it. So now that we have this in here, all we need to do is change the shape to polar to rectangular. And there you have it. Now I can add a transform node to make it rotate. Okay, let's go to frame zero, animate angle, last frame, animate to minus 360. Why minus 360? Because minus means clockwise. Let's go ahead and play it. All right, so everything is working the way we anticipated. Only problem is, I mentioned that there would be some cutoff, right? And that's because whatever the duplicate is duplicating at that point is as far as the canvas will go. So now what we're going to do, we're going to create another canvas in the middle, which is going to ignore the outer edges. How do we do that? It's a little trick here. So we're going to take a background, pipe it in, okay? And then we're actually going to reverse these connections. See how the background is going into the foreground here? The green connection. And this stuff is going in the background, the yellow connection. I'm just going to click on the merge and hit Shift E. We'll reverse the connections. So this background is now on the bottom. So if we were working with layers, this would be a bottom layer and this would be a top layer. So this is the background, this is the foreground. Easy, right? If it helps visually, I could just put it up top here. So you can see that this is a background and all this is the foreground, okay? So now, as you can see, because the background, this, I'm gonna call it canvas, because this is smaller, it's only 19, 20, 10, 80. It's actually ignoring the stuff that was getting cut off earlier. All right, this is looking good. If you're new to Fusion, check out the intro animation primer to learn the basics of using the Fusion tab. It covers everything from the UI, how to use nodes, how to animate, and how to work with texts and shapes. Now, a thing to keep in mind is that Fusion is resolution independent. So it doesn't have a set resolution that you're going to work at. So whenever you're working with mixed resolution media, in this case, you have these um, graphical elements that are 4,000 by 4,000, and then you also have another one that's 19, 20, 1080. So whatever is in the background is what Fusion's going to use as the final output. So if you've seen some of my previous work, sometimes I'll call it settings. And that is just to set the canvas size or the color space. So in this case, it's black, transparent, and the size is 1920, 1080. All right, now that we have this thing looking good, let's add some embellishments. First thing I'm going to do is add the grain node. The grain is a sort of an obsolete film grain node. So in future releases of DaVinci, they'll probably phase the grain out and keep the film grain. I'm going to use the grain in this case. Let me show you what it's gonna look like. Just pipe it in and set it to three. Let me zoom in and this is what it looks like. It's like a film grain. And if I hit play, you can see that it's moving like a film grain. Okay, now that I have some grain on there just for a little texture and a little depth, I'm going to add some noise to it, okay? And noise and grain are two different things. Grain or film grain is what you get from using traditional cameras, whereas the noise is more of a optical a defect. Let me show you what I'm using if you're interested. I'll leave a link to this website called Mextures by Merrick Davis. And if you go to the store and scroll down, you have some freebies. This is an amazing website that I use all the time. And this pack, Grit and Grain, is actually free. The file that I'm using is called Noise Complaint. Let's go ahead and import that. Bring it in. And I'm going to pipe this in. Let me call it Noise. And I can change the Apply Mode to Screen in the Merge. And I'm going to turn down the blend to about 60%. If you zoom in, you can still see these white spots here. That's the texture. Next, I'm going to copy the first yellow background. 
paste it here, type it in, and give it a elliptical mask, make it smaller, and then I can adjust the gradient handle all the way down here. There you go. And I'm going into the merge and turning it down to about 60%. Because I want some of these bars to be visible behind. And then I'm going to take this whole thing, copy it, paste it one more time, hook it up. This one I'm going to make fully opaque. I'll make it a little bit smaller like this. And maybe even give it a bit of a soft edge. Just like that. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel to see more motion graphics tutorials for Fusion. I have a lot of videos in the works for making transitions, intros, particles, titles, and everything on this channel is going to be free to download. So if you guys want to see something like that, let me know by hitting subscribe and like. Let's add some text to give it some context. Change the font, Montserrat Black, Italic. I'm going to change the size and give it a little bit of tracking. And then I'm going to go into shading, activate shading element number two, change the color and the thickness. There you go. Let's preview. That looks good. And then you can animate the text as well if you want. Now, if you wanted to do some funky stuff to the bars, you could do that too by going over here where the uh, mask is for this teal colored bar and just add in a transform. Go to the first frame, make the size zero, go to frame 70, size one, and let's preview. And then, of course, you can animate the circles in the middle. You can animate the text on top if you want. That looks interesting. You can animate the size of the bars as well. I used this design recently in a thumbnail. So all I did was take a screenshot of the Vertigo and put some text on top to make my thumbnail. And there you have it, folks. Grab the code, mess it up, use it and abuse it. Subscribe if you want to see more motion graphics tutorials for Fusion. Comment down below if you have any requests. Email me if you get stuck and need help. I'm Sadi. Happy compositing and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.